Next uh, speaker will be Andre uh, Komisarov, uh, um, A H three and two uh, A flu virus evolution of humans. Fifty years together. I'm very, I'm very glad to be here, and I'm grateful to the scientific committee for having invited me. My presentation is dedicated to one of the seasonal uh, A uh, flu uh, virus. Uh, AH32. Why is it unique uh, to study the evolution? Exactly H3 and 2, because this is the only example of seasonal flu virus which we can observe throughout 50 years since 1968. H3 uh, and 2 subtype virus has been circulated in uh, human uh, organism, and we have a plethora of uh, data on genetic and antigenes, uh, retrospective sequences of viruses of 1960s, 70s, and 80s, and current actual sequencing conducted by the system of global vigilance over flu. Uh, about 10 or 15,000 sequences come up annually, which is related to the transition to entirely new paradigm of surveillance over flu. Historically, retrospectively, it looked like this. PCR positive specimen um, or is tested in PCR uh, if patient is PCR patient, so they identified in uh, cell culture, uh, study antigens and genetic characteristics, and now more and more countries uh, uh, participating in uh, uh, flu uh, uh, surveillance, they shift to page, uh, paradigm sequence first. They do sequ sequencing first. They do NGS sequencing because its price is slumping and opportunities hiking. Very interesting genetical viruses are transmitted for virus identification and anti Aging characteristics. This generates a huge, massive of data available for researchers around the world. Despite the fact that Yuri Mihailovich briefly filled you in on the basics of virusology and flu viruses, I would like to dwell in more details on some of the implications. A uh, whole virus with segmented genome uh, is very important for the evolution. Genome consists of eight segments. Uh, Three segments, hemagglutinin, nevidazi, and M. Seventh segment, uh, code uh, proteins, uh, encode proteins which are on the surface of the virus. For us, hemagglutinin is important. It's responsible for binding with the receptors, the luminizer, which releases it. And M2 protein, viraparin, is present. Uh, in virulent membrane and is playing very important uh, a role in the blend of viral segments with the cell. Other segments uh, are encoding proteins which are not represented on the surface. Three or four segments are encoding polymerase complexes of uh, uh, supplemental proteins. NP05 segment uh, encodes uh, the protein packaging, uh, uh, those nuclein acids. Eighth segment encodes non structure and S1 and F non-structural proteins participating in different functions to combat uh, antiviral cell response. What is the diversity with flu virus? is predominantly birds, flu, bird flu. Uh, the highest diversity is among the birds in this bird flu. Altogether, uh, we classify different types and subtypes of viruses mostly will or exclusively will speak about A type. And mindful of the diversity of A type, uh, actually, as uh, there could be uh, 18 uh, types, subtypes on hemagglutinin and 11 on neuromelitans. So you can calculate theoretical possible uh, number of combinations multiplying 11 by 18 by 11. But in reality, not all of them are to be encountered. This is not the very updated data on sequenced viruses, which are in database. But in this heat map, you can assess tentatively uh, the representation of different subtypes. Of course, uh, uh, 
Uh, this uh, table is compromised by the fact that mostly viruses from we, f from humans are sequenced. Uh, uh, H1 and 1, H3 and 2 are widely represented because they are major seasonal uh, human flu viruses. Much less attention is given to birds uh, here. If we take a look at the host specificity, red shows the viruses which could uh, infect human beings. They are just a handful of those. The overwhelming majority of the remaining viruses showed by block. These are virus flu viruses infecting birds, and most of them for birds are low pathogenic and uh, induce uh, asymptomatic asymptom infections. H18 and uh, 10 and 10 are uh, bad uh, viruses, very exotic variant discovered quite recently. Uh, if we are to take a good look at this, previously we saw viruses of flu which could infect human beings in principle, but here red shows those which in some time periods uh, are evoking uh, seasonal uh, infections, uh, H1N1, H2N2, and, and H3N3. Uh, most of them are of zoonotic nature and are not transmitted from human beings to human beings or have got a limited potential on transmission from human to human. And my presentation will be dedicated to H3 and 2 virus. But first, in, in a nutshell, the mechanisms of evolution. Uh, there are two major mechanisms of evolution of uh, uh, viruses, genetic drift and genetic shift. Uh, in a combination for flu uh, drift is not. A genetic uh, drift is the accumulation of replacements in sequences of the viral genome is due to the errors in virus polymerase. And genetic shift uh, is the involvement of new strains via resortation of the segment of new genome. If we look back onto the 20th century, and uh, particularly the chronology of one or other subtype circulation, in 1918 there was a um, Spanish fever, uh, flu pandemia. Then H1N1 uh, was transformed into the seasonal virus of flu and was circulated as a seasonal virus that caused annual epidemics uh, until 1957. In 1957, new pandemic strain came onto stage, most probably uh, from birds, the same as Spanish flu, and it was H2N2. It circulated from 1957 until 1968, the so-called Asian flu, then H3N2, Hong Kong flu. From 1968 up to now, it is circulating among the human beings and causes uh, diseases every epidemiological season. Starting from 1977, H1N1, the so-called Russian or Soviet flu, which is a continuation of the seasonal Spanish flu virus. It disappeared for some 20 years from 1957 until 1977, but then it came back. There are many hypotheses in terms of this return. And the seasonal virus A that circulated until 2009, which was replaced then with pandemic virus of swine origin. The key role in the formation of pandemic strains is played by a combination of genes, new gene combinations of uh, flu viruses. As for the possible uh, Spanish flu progenitors, we know very little because the reverse genetics methods were devised much later. And we do not know uh, its peers that circulated among different animals. So we think that all the segments of the genome uh, were of birds' origin, though we do not have particular proof, molecular proof to that. In 1957, the majority of the segments were from the old virus. 
as for bird or avian flu, H2 and 2, only three hemagglutinin and one of the common components of the polymerase uh, complex. In 1968, a new uh, reassortment took place, but not all the segments were replaced. Some of them remained uh, as a, a legacy from the previous seasonal uh, virus. Hemagglutinin and PB1 came from the new uh, virus. If we look at the pandemic virus now, as of 2009, we'll see that PB1 is from the hum human seasonal H3 and 2, and the other segments from different swine flu viruses. Thus, reassortment is key in terms of new pandemic variants. Should be mentioned that the picture is even more complicated, much more complicated. If we look at the early H3N2, as of the end of the 60s, beginning of the 70s, we'll see that not all of them have this canonic structure that I described uh, recently. Uh, PB1, hemagglutinin, new seg as new segments, all the rest from the previous viruses. There's a great lot. Oh, there used to be a great lot of variants, different variants, uh, from uh, H2N2 genetic groups. It uh, changed a lot in the course of 10 years it used to circulate. And this constellation of genes stabilized not uh, uh, straight away a few years after the pandemic. What is the role of PB1 segment? Inclusion of PB1 avian gene gives uh, the viruses some competitive advantage. There's a great lot of studies, experimental in vitro studies, that show or think about the mechanism of this competitive advantage. And there are experimental proof of cooperation between PB1 segment on the one hand and hemagglutinin on the other. The success of the virus depends on the success of this constellation and not only is connected with hemagglutinin characteristics, to which usually the greatest, uh, um, which usually uh, attracts the most attention, and hence uh, vaccine and other reassortants, 3 plus 5, very often are more efficient from the point of view of replication than reassortants 2 plus 6 when we take only HA and neuraminidase from the new virus. The new virus, the pandemic one, enters uh, the human population in 1968. It turns into seasonal virus, starts to circulate, and the main role in the evolution of the seasonal uh, strain uh, is played by the uh, genetic drive. The accumulation of the variants that actually evolve the immune response of the host. If we look at the antigen history of H3 and 2, we'll see that it is presented by some antigenic clusters, and there's a whole set of uh, replacements in the area of uh, receptor binding sites of uh, HA point replacements that lead to transfers between clusters. These clusters differ from each other by antigens and the vaccine against virus uh, from one of the clusters won't be efficient protection against the other cluster. Here you see phylogenetic trees in terms of all uh, virus A segments, H3 and 2, starting from 1968 uh, up to 2012 or thereabouts. That's P09 uh, cluster. And you see the genetic drift and how it happens. If we look at the speed of evolution, we'll see the different segments evolve with various speed. We may expect that the highest speed of evolution, the highest accumulation of changes will happen in HA. I didn't have enough uh, space on one slide, but nevertheless, you may see that here we have point two, 
and here point eight replacements uh, for the position in this particular protein. So the surface proteins will evolve more quickly. Uh, hemagglutinin uh, hem and does and PB1 protein that is present only in the infected cell and the speed of evolution of it is comparable with the uh, surface uh, glycoproteins. That's the protein that involves uh, is involved in the regulation of apoptosis. And a very interesting object, and it belongs to PB1 segment that play a very important role in the success of these genome constellations. Interesting to say that there are literature data in terms of the presence of uh, uh, antibodies against PB1 F2 and a trial dedicated to antibodies against PB1 F2 and their role in the absence of presence of pathologies. And the speed of evolution changes depends on the host. If we say that H3 and 2 human virus A, uh, it doesn't mean that it affects only humans. We carried out a test, human virus uh, A, H3 and 2 in swines. Swines are good reservoirs for mixing up uh, the flu viruses, both uh, human viruses and avian viruses may affect swines. So we uh, conducted this work in pig farms. We found various uh, different uh, flu viruses, including H3 and 2, and this work human viruses in terms of their sequence and phylogenetic analysis. This allowed us to envisage the reverse uh, uh, infection when the uh, pigs were infected by the infected uh, human beings working on these pig farms. And look, the viruses of 2014 isolated from uh, the swines and sequenced are grouped with the human viruses H3 and 2 as of 2009. So either they evolve slower or another hypothesis, they acquire certain replacements and come back to the condition they existed uh, in 2009. But most probably evolution of uh, H3 and 2 of flu viruses goes on slower in swines than in human beings. When we spoke about reassortment, we mentioned its role in the formation of new pandemic strains. But does it play any role in the evolution of seasonal epidemic strain? And is it present? Uh, whether we have this reassortment in seasonal strains or not. The data show, you see the phylogenetic trees, hemagglutinin neuramina does uh, uh, connection. We can put all the eight trees and uh, mark uh, the links between them. But uh, nevertheless, we can see the presence of reassortance between different groups inside uh, H3 and 2 subtype, around 59 episodes of reassortment, intra-subtypical uh, reassortment in seasonal H3 and 2 virus. What is its possible role? It's quite difficult to prove, but there is a whole series of speculations or hypotheses in terms of new reassortant variants inside the H3 and 2 subtype. Since modern H3 and 2 viruses are, are highly heterogeneous and are represented by a lot of groups, 32A1, 32B, uh, etc., these are different clades, uh, topical clades of uh, H3 and 2 virus. And here you can see how the reassortant variant uh, is uh, formed in which part of the segments come from 3C to 1B, two segments. Visually, hemagglutinin and PB1 from 
another group, 3C, A2 of similar viruses. And in 2017, eight, uh, 2018 epidemiological season, the number of these viruses grew drastically. The American colleagues who carried out this study were prone to connect uh, uh, this new variant formation with the higher activity of flu-like uh, diseases in the U.S. in the season of 2017-2018. We also registered this variant and we're preparing the publication. Uh, throughout uh, the years since 1968, uh, hemagglutinin as a protein has undergone significant changes. The surface charge changed uh, significantly as the electric point has changed. If initially this protein was very similar to the avian flu, now in terms of physical chemical characteristics is uh, very different from the avian virus and uh, uh, glycosylating sites or sick worms are constantly being selected and accumulated. These are the sites uh, called the Annex S O T experimental possibilities to confirm whether they are really uh, truly glycosylated or not are uh, very few. But with the bioinformatics methods, we see that such potential sites are accumulated. And back in 1968-69, the avian uh, flu viruses uh, H3 and 2 had seven potential glycosylating sites. In 2013-2014, they had uh, the birds had the same six, seven potential sites, while the humans had more than 12. And this certainly impacts the uh, characteristics, uh, the stability of folding of hemagglutinin. In particular, we know that a whole series of uh, human pathogens like uh, HIV-1, SARS, Ebola virus have even more glycosylating sites uh, in the surface uh, proteins. And the capacity of uh, H3 hemagglutinin is not clear. We do not know how many sites more it can accumulate. On the whole, the genetic drive led to the change of uh, receptor specificity of H3 and 2 flu virus. From 1968 to uh, 2002, uh, the affinity to oxalic acids, uh, human, uh, alpha-2,6 uh, decreased fourfold. In the course of the next uh, seven years, it went down 200-fold. And in order to survive the virus, developed compensatory replacements and uh, wholly uh, independent receptor that uh, uh, has a binding site in Niramirinidas. H150R replacement allows H3 and 2 viruses to uh, bind to receptors via Niramirinidas, which is absolutely awful from the point of view of existing methods of uh, assessment of antigenic features of uh, H3 flu, a uh, hemagglutination reaction and it's uh, slowed down. It's very difficult to work with these viruses and only uh, today uh, they are processed in the presence of uh, neuraminidus inhibitors. You can not see the dates here, but practically in the same time, uh, we see th uh, the blue points, they have H, but the majority of the viruses have R in the same position. Thus, uh, H3 and 2 uh, flu A virus is uh, unique. It is uh, circulating among the human population for 50 years. No other virus, no other subtype of flu has such a long uh, history of observation and such possibilities for analysis of genetic and other characteristics. And I've touched upon uh, the very top of the iceberg in terms of these studies. Throughout 50 years, hemagglutinin has undergone very significant changes, has acquired a lot of new sites of glycosylating and practically lost receptor binding uh, features. While neuramini does uh, acquired uh, the second receptor binding site. 
interests of Thai Pekria Sotmans play a very important role, and uh, the evolution of genome in sequence viruses has to be perceived as a whole. We can't consider the evolution only based on surface uh, glycoproteins, however important they are, because for the evolutionary success of the virus, the whole uh, gene constellation is important. Thank you. And thank you. No questions. Tell me, please, Andre. It's uh, just fantastic that you've managed uh, to observe and describe all this. But my question is, can we predict anything? Our science, epidemiology, it can explain everything afterwards. But what about uh, predicting the future? In evolutionary oncology, we do predict certain things. And our predictions uh, come true. In your evolutionary virology of the flu, is the situation similar or not? This is a hot spot of our study. As of now, we have no problems in terms of predicting antigenic uh, features based on the genetic ones. But that's not exactly what you asked about. Based on the sequence, without characterizing the uh, uh, genes uh, out of the smear, the primary material, we can approximately predict uh, the antigenic features. Uh, based on machine learning, there are algorithms uh, to do this. But in terms of predicting the strain that is going to circulate without any uh, initial information, here we come across uh, lots of problems. There are several methods connected with intensity of phylogenetic uh, trees branching. This uh, mathematics method very complicated from math point of view. And identifying the hotspots so of branching, which clives are ramifying and branching more, diverge more. Uh, but uh, we cannot refer to those methods as precise ones, unfortunately. There is a resource around which was uh, compiled by Trevor Batford Group, Layer Group from Basel University. Uh, the resource is called uh, nexttrain.org. This is uh, online real-time tracker of evolution of different viruses and uh, flu virus, Ebola virus, and many others. Among other things, we can observe online and real-time uh, different uh, data information because it takes aggregates the data from database of sequences uh, and very conveniently represents them and there is some local there is a local branching index shown here on those phylogenetic uh, trees this resource in part at least is being used for uh, vaccine meetings in order to assess the evolutional perspectives for different clients of viruses. Uh, but uh, they don't manage to do it in a very good way yet as to H3 viruses, uh, the flu viruses. The guidelines were postponed for this uh, flu virus. For this uh, pandemonic season, as to the further growth of high representation of H3 component vaccine strain is not observed. There was a local upswing in increased representation of this group of viruses, which uh, coincided very successful with the moment of this vaccine meeting, meeting and postponed vaccine guideline. But we never saw such vaccines in Russia yet. And in Russia, correspondingly, they share mindful of what we see out of southern south uh, hemisphere is not large as well. Nonetheless, they are doing a lot along those lines. Lots of studies are being done. Many studies are underway. 
uh, but their prospects are a bit obscure for future. But everybody who's interested in flu evolution, even those who are not related to the flu, but who are interested in comparing vaccine guidelines with what we have, I recommend to use this next train or uh, resource. Even layman can get an idea what is happening to the flu right now, right away. Thank you. I have one question. When you were comparing human age three and two uh, to swine grip, which uh, sites did you sequence? Uh, we sequenced full genome and we were comparing the sequences of full genometry. That's right. That's very right. 